worse than ever. This is Brother Peter, Tidbits from the Word. The, the name of this tidbit is worse than ever. We were talking about the Antichrist who is going to be, this earth is going to be worse than ever it ever was. You say, is it possible to be worse than it was in the day of Noah and when God destroyed the whole earth? Yes, I'm telling you, it's going to be worse in that day. There is going to be a day, the Bible said, when the people are going to cry out for the rocks to fall on them and kill them and they won't be able to die. But when I talk about that right now, right now we're talking about Christ the Savior coming and the Antichrist coming who is opposite from the Savior. Now, before the Antichrist can be revealed and revealed, totally revealed, He's going to reveal himself as the Savior of the world again, as another Christ, as Christ, the Christ of God, came. And this Christ is going to be the Antichrist. He's going to be the Christ of the devil. And his heaven that he's going to reward people with by following him is hell. And hell, the Bible said, is the second death, the lake of fire, the second death to those who follow that Antichrist. Now, the Good Shepherd was Jesus Christ who came to save. In John 10, 4 through 5, he said, I am the Good Shepherd, and my sheep hear my voice. When he comes in 2 Thessalonians 5 and 2, and he says, Come up hither. We'll all go up. 1 Thessalonians, excuse me, 5 and 2. We'll all go up. Those of us who are saved will be gone from this earth. We'll be snatched away. And then, but when the Antichrist, the idol, he is the evil shepherd. He's the evil shepherd. Zechariah uh, 11, 16 and 17 says that this man will be revealed as the evil man. Take your Bible. Look these word th places up. Christ is the true vine. John 15, 1 said, I am the vine, and he abideth in me, will be hooked to the true vine. I, are, you, are you hooked to the true vine today? But the Antichrist is going to be the vine of the earth. Revelation 14 and 18, or 14 and 15. He is going to be the Antichrist, the opposite. He's going to claim himself to be the vine of the earth. And you sprout off of him and you will be in good hands. No, you're not going to be. You're going to have to follow the way of the devil in order to do that. Now, Jesus Christ came as the truth, the whole truth. John 14 and 6. He said, I am truth. He was truth. Jesus Christ came as truth. The Antichrist now is going to come as a lie. Second Thessalonians 2 and 11 said, when that man is revealed, he's going to be revealed as the great liar. He's the great Antichrist. He is going to lie his way through uh, the place. Now, Christ came as the Holy One. Mark 1 and 24 says that Christ was holy, totally holy, 100%, and he was. He was totally. Now, the Antichrist is going to be the lawless one, 100% lawless. He's going to be the total lawless one. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8. Uh, and is, is, he's called the lawless one. If you'll search those words out and check it out, you'll find out it will take you to the man with no law, the lawless one. And that's going to be uh, the Antichrist. And then uh, Jesus was a man of sorrows, and the Antichrist is going to come. It's going to be the man of sin. <coughs> Jesus was revealed as a man of sorrows. He took the sorrow of the world upon him 
and he was a man that lived in sorrow. He said uh, uh, that he was the son of man, the son of God. He had no place to lay his head. He said the birds have nests, and the, the uh, other things, the foxes have holes. But the son of man had nowhere to lay his head. It's upon a rock. He had no home. He had no house. He had no permanent dwelling place on this earth. He was a true passer through. For 33 years, he passed through this earth. The last three years, revealing himself, who he was, the Son of God, and how he was sent to uh, deliver us. And the Son of God. And the Son of Perdition is the Antichrist. He's the opposite from the Son of God. In 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3, tells us this. Last but not least, he was the mystery of godliness was Jesus Christ on the cross and shedding his blood for us. But the mystery of iniquity is Satan. He is the mystery of iniquity. And he is going to be revealed. Second Thessalonians 2 and 7 says that this Antichrist is going to be revealed who he is and what he portrays and who he really is at the end of it. Where Christ was manifested in the flesh, the mystery of godliness brought forth that you and I who have asked him to come into our heart, save our soul, and be our redeemer. We know that mystery. It's only a mystery to those who have never asked Jesus into their heart to save their soul. And that makes it a mystery to them because they can't hear that, that shepherd because he's the shepherd only of the saved. If you please, the Bible I have in my hand today, the Bible we have right here, the Bible we have right here, these Bibles are the true word of God. And what these Bibles are is they're a love letter to the saved person. If you're saved, the Holy Spirit that wrote this book reveals it to you so it's not a mystery. The man that's not saved could read it all day, never get a thing from it. He could say, I wonder what that means. I wonder what that means. I wonder what that means. And some people who are not saved try to tell you today what it means. Some people who have never been experienced the born again, truly born again, have revised the Bible, have rewritten it, have done many things with it. And you, you know what? I'm going to tell you what. The Bible says itself that those very people, what they left out was going to be added to them in their day of fire. When they get to hell, when they get to eternity in their eternal death, what they left out of here is going to be added to them. And uh, what's going to happen is what they added to it is going to be added to them. And what they left out is going to be added to them. Now, the book of Revelations is crystal clear to the man who has Jesus Christ in his heart. You say, how can that be, Brother Peter? Well, the Holy Spirit that wrote the book, if he lives in your heart, he can give you the understanding of the book. We're going to talk a few minutes in the next couple excerpts about looking at some of this prophecy in this book. My advice to you is take, get you a pad and a pen and write down some of these things. Now listen, I listen to a radio station called W-O-A-K-A-K.com LaGrange. W-O-A-K.com LaGrange. That's in LaGrange, Georgia, in the United States, in the heart of uh, the South. And it's a, a Christian radio station put on just so that you and I can have spiritual listening to 24-7, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can hear good preaching, good teaching, good singing, all 
from the King James.